Axra's algorithm finds you the shortest path from a source to a target vertex. In this example, the path in green is the shortest path and has a length of 1 plus 2 plus 2 equals 5. In fact, Dijkstra's algorithm will not only calculate the shortest path to the target vertex, but also to all other vertices. Let's apply Dijkstra's algorithm to this example to see how it operates. Before we start, we need to check that all edge weights are greater or equal to zero. Throughout the algorithm, we keep track of the so far shortest distance to each vertex and the current predecessor of each vertex on the current shortest path in the table below. In the very first step, we color the source vertex green and update the distance to zero. Now we look at the three neighbors of A. Vertices B, C and D have now a distance of 6, 12 and 1 to the source vertex A and we update this information in the table. Also, we update the predecessor of B, C and D to vertex A. Now we want to go on the shortest path to one of these vertices. But to which vertex should we go? Going to vertex B directly would be wrong, as the distance is 6 and because there is a shorter path to B with a length of 5. The right choice would be to go to vertex C, as the edge has the lowest weight among all three edges. There cannot be a shorter path to C, as all other paths start with an edge that is already longer than 1. Before we move on, let's have a look what could go wrong in the case of negative edge weights. Then the shortest path may not be the direct edge to the closest neighbor. In this case, the red path has a length of 0 and is the shortest path from A to C. Ok, so now let's move on with Dijkstra. We went from A to C, as the edge weight of AC is the smallest. Now we update the neighbors of C. The distance of C from the source vertex A is 1, the edge weight of CD is 3, so we update the distance to vertex D to 4, and the predecessor of D to vertex C. Similarly, the distance of F becomes 3, and the predecessor of F becomes vertex C as well. So far we have only visited vertices A and C. Among all other vertices, vertex F has the lowest distance of 3. That's why we visit vertex F now. As before, we now look at all neighbors of F. For vertex D, we already know a path of length 4. If we go to vertex D via the shortest path to F, the distance would increase to 3 plus 19 equals 22. For this reason, we do not update vertex D, but only the other neighbors H and I. From now on, we just need to continue in the same way. Notice that at this point we found the shortest path from the source vertex A to the target vertex H. If this is all we need, we can stop the algorithm now. Otherwise, the algorithm continues and calculates shortest paths to all remaining vertices. Now Dijkstra's algorithm is finally completely done. The green subgraph forms the so-called minimum path tree the shortest paths from the source vertex A to all other vertices. The length of each path is the distance value obtained from the table. Here are some facts to remember about Dijkstra's algorithm. The graph must be connected and all edge weights have to be greater or equal to zero. Because the algorithm always goes to the current cheapest neighbor, Dijkstra's algorithm is a so-called greedy algorithm. Dijkstra's algorithm calculates the shortest path between the source vertex and all remaining vertices. There may be multiple different shortest paths or shortest path trees with the same distance values. If implemented using an appropriate data structure, the time complexity is the number of edges 
plus the number of vertices times the logarithm of the number of vertices. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you want to support my work, please subscribe and recommend me to your friends. Also, would you like to see a video like this on similar topics? Please let me know in the comments below. Thanks and bye.